Sometimes when a person engages in a good deed and in his heart he would like to show off, he would like to show someone, it is known as a riya. This type of show actually negates the good deed and results in the dropping or eradication of the reward of that particular good deed because we are showing. It happens sometimes even in prayer where a person is rushing in prayer and when another one happens to pass them, they quickly make their prayer slightly slower or the posture slightly better. That is known as association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when a person is sick and ill, what happens is they visit the doctors. Alhamdulillah, that is important because al-akhdu bil-asbab, to do whatever is beneficial for you in order to achieve what you would like to achieve is very important. But to feel that it is solely the doctor who is going to cure you and to remove Allah from the equation is association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should know that we call out to the Almighty and ask the Almighty to grant the doctor the ability to do that which is correct so that we can be granted cure by the Almighty. It is a technicality which we need to understand and protect ourselves from misunderstanding. So brothers and sisters, the same applies to wealth and sustenance. If we are to achieve wealth and sustenance through the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is ingratitude which we will get to in a few moments. But if we are to sell our faith in order to achieve that which is material, perhaps we may be associating wealth as a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'isa abdu dirham, ta'isa abdu dinar, ta'isa wantakasa wa idha shika falan taqash. Amazingly, we talk of destruction for the one, the one who worships the dirham and the dinar, the one who worships gold and silver. They are definitely at great loss and they are definitely people who are at such a loss that even if they were pricked, they would not be able to help themselves remove that particular thorn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This is why we see sometimes people may be granted lots of wealth, but they still cannot help themselves in terms of health. Sometimes no matter how much wealth you have, it does not bring about sleep because the Almighty is the owner of the wealth and the sleep. Sometimes the Almighty wants to make it clear to us that he is the owner of health as well as wealth, as well as sustenance in terms of blessing, because some people's blessings are snatched away because of their evil deeds. May the Almighty grant us goodness. Another way of association of partnership with the Almighty is when a person becomes so secularly in their thinking that they remove the Almighty from the equation. What this means, Allah describes in the Quran, have you seen the one who has considered his own brain or mind or intellect as a god besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So he worships his mind, his brain, his intellect and removes the Almighty from the equation. Allah says, such a person, Allah has sealed their eyes, their ears and their faculties and none can guide them besides the Almighty. So do you not take heed? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And what we mean here is when the Almighty has revealed a verse or when revelation has come down, when the messenger peace be upon him has clarified something in its authentic form, we need to know, yes, it is important for us to try our best to understand what the Almighty is saying and why he is saying it. But there will always be certain items we may not be able to understand exactly why they have been revealed. The mere fact that they have been revealed by the Almighty should be enough for us really to engage in it. Take a look at the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He was instructed to do things that did not make sense to the human mind, but it made sense to the believing heart. Allahu Akbar. So there is a difference between the human mind and brain and the believing heart. The heart of a believer surrenders to the Almighty, whilst the mind might have a question or two of understanding 
But ultimately, whether we understand it or not, when we know the source of the instruction and we still surrender to that particular instruction, we then join the ranks of those who are the friends of the Almighty, such as Ibrahim. May Allah's peace be upon him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from his life as well. So brothers and sisters, it is important for us to protect ourselves from all types of association of partnership with the Almighty. Because no matter how much salah we read, no matter how much Quran we read, no matter how many charities we have given, if we have associated a partner with the Almighty, we then spoil our deeds. And we have seen the warnings that were issued even to the messengers to say, you dare engage in any form of association of partnership with me, Allah says. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. The next point that is important for us to realize is the issue of innovation. Where a person feels that they know better than the messenger, may peace be upon him. The messenger, peace be upon him, was sent to us in order to teach us how to worship Allah. That was the reason why he was sent. He was sent to teach us how the Almighty wants to be worshipped. So if anyone comes up with an act of worship that was not taught by the messenger, peace be upon him, he has directly insulted the messenger and he has also directly insulted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason is, what was the point of sending a messenger to teach us how to worship Allah when we think we know better than him? May Allah protect us. And sometimes people get so upset when we tell the people not to do things which were not done by the messenger. They think perhaps you, be you belong to a sect that is deviant. May the Almighty protect us. There is no deviance in a sect that calls towards obeying the instruction of the messenger and abandoning anything in terms of acts of worship that he has not taught. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The messenger has said, on many occasions, I leave with you two things. For as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never be led astray. That is the book of Allah and my traditions, my ways. May the Almighty grant us a beautiful return to the path of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, if you take a look at Surah Al-Kahf, towards the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the biggest losers, those who do lots of deeds, and they think they are doing good deeds. But at the same time, they have not followed the messenger's path and way. And this is why they have lost. Say, oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them, should I inform you of the one who is the greatest of losers or those who are the greatest of losers of their deeds? People who have spoiled their deeds completely. They are those whose struggle was always astray. They neither followed the path of the messenger. They did deeds, acts of worship, which were not taught, not done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. And they thought that they were doing good. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. People who would like to add one rak'ah in the rak'ah of dhuhr or the afternoon prayer, they would re it would result in the nullification of the entire prayer. Because we are only allowed the units which were done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. The same applies to all other acts of worship. Beloved brothers and sisters, never ever think that there is a single act of worship that the messenger forgot to teach us. Never ever think that there is any act of worship that you may engage in that would be better than what the messenger has come with and never ever think that the messenger has not done the deeds which were enough for us to follow so now we need to come up with a new deed and a new act of worship that would result in the spoiling of your deeds may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness this is why towards the end of the same surah allah says فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever is looking forward to the meeting with the Almighty, they should fulfill two main conditions. Don't you want to meet the Almighty? 
Don't you want to meet your maker? Don't you want to meet the one who created you? Well, if you want to meet him, Allah says, whoever is looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make sure that they have two qualities in them. One is that they do deeds that were taught by the messenger alone. No extra deed. Don't think for a moment that you will achieve spirituality by doing a deed that was not done by the messenger. May peace be upon him. If you would like to know every deed of yours, Ask the scholars around you, was this done by the messenger? If it was not, you do not need it in your life, no matter where else it came from. May the Almighty grant us pure. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.